So I'm Bobby Berkowitz. I have the distinct honor and pleasure of serving as dean in this wonderful new building. You know, I feel like I could just say, wow, and then we could all go home. <laughs> however, however, I know that sounds like a good deal, yeah. I thought you'd all like that. However, I have a few things to say and a lot of people to thank. So let me begin uh, by uh, expressing my gratitude for President Bollinger and our trustees, Dean Goldman, uh, and members of the CUMC community and all of our Washington Heights community uh, for coming and joining us this evening. You know, I never imagined when I arrived at Columbia seven years ago that I would have an opportunity such as this, uh, welcoming you to our new home, our 125th anniversary uh, as a school of nursing. And I'd like to thank the members of our school, our faculty, our staff, who are the reason that we are in the top 10 schools of nursing in the US. A very special thank you to our generous donors and our alums, many of which are with us tonight. Columbia University leadership, again, many of whom are with us tonight. A special thank you to Dr. Mary Mundinger, my predecessor, whose early vision of what Columbia nursing could be has guided much of what we have accomplished. She was unable to be here tonight, but when you see her, um, tell her thank you. So for those of you who have had the pleasure of creating a new home, whether it's your own that you're going to live in or something in the community or a building such as this, you know it takes a team. Uh, well, we have a very big team, uh, and I want to especially thank Ton Tony Donatich, who's the Director of Capital Project Management. <laughs> Uh, Tony has assured the quality and timeliness of this project. He also gets the award for conducting the most tours <laughs> throughout this building and for such a strong advocate for getting it right. He also has tolerated my intervention on more than a few details, uh, which no doubt slowed the process down a bit. Thank you, Tony, for your patience. Also, thank you to uh, Amador Centeno. Amador, where are you? There. Amador is Vice President, uh, Facilities Management and Campus Services. He is one of the best problem solvers I have ever met. I, when he calls me on the phone, it's always, Bobby, <laughs> I want to talk to you about something. But he always solves the problem. And um, I also want to give a major thank you to Jason Wright. Jason, where are you? So Jason is our Associate Dean for Finance and Administration at Columbia Nursing. I want to thank him especially for assuring that every aspect of this project met our vision for the type of environment we wanted for our school. Thank you for that, Jason. He is also a formidable negotiator. Just ask uh, our contractors. <laughs> our development team, led by Reva Feinstein. Reva, where are you? There. <laughs> Reva and her team uh, have really inspired not only us, uh, but our family, friends, and alums uh, to join us in this venture, and I'd like to acknowledge the generosity of our partners in this building. So, our new building currently has 30 named spaces. 22 of those spaces were named by Columbia Nursing alum. Many of you are with us tonight. Thank you very much. A $6.5 million pledge from the Helene Fold Health Trust to support the Helene Fold Health Trust Simulation Center, which if you haven't seen it already, you will later. This gift also underwrites an institute for excellence in simulation and increases financial aid for our students through the Helene Fold Scholarship Fund. Thank you to the fund. A $1 million gift from Mary Dickey Lindsay of uh, the class of 45. She and her family are sitting right here. <laughs> Their gift supports the building's state-of-the-art simulation center with a skills laboratory on the second floor, named for both Mary Lindsay uh, and her daughter, Louise Lindsay Reed, uh, a graduate of 1974. A $1 million commitment to name this impressive uh, 
uh, interior light-filled atrium uh, comes from Columbia University Presbyterian Hospital School of Nursing Alumni Association. Thank all of you very much. Roy and Diana Vagelos um, has named the fourth floor right in the heart of our building with a $1 million gift. And I know their son, Andrew, you are somewhere here. Where are you? A $700,000 gift from an alumnus from the class of 93 is named the northern terrace of the new building sprawling rooftop top garden. And finally, um, the building will also serve as the home to the Jonas Center for Nursing and Veterans Health Care. Many of you know of that um, organization led by Barbara and Donald Jonas in the city of New York. We are honored to partner with them. Uh, they have given us a $11.1 million grant uh, to, to partner, and uh, we are very pleased to have them um, join us. Yes. So, You've toured through the building a little bit. You know that there's a lot of vision and invention uh, and inspiration behind this building, and it began with our architectural firm, COFX Fowl, and our architects are with us this evening. Uh, they've been true partners in this enterprise, and together we have created a building that is not only exquisite and technologically rich, but one that truly serves our mission to prepare nurses as clinicians and leaders and scholars in ways that transform the health and health care in communities across the country and around the world. The new building ensures that our mission and our legacy will live on for generations. So here in this new building, we're going to continue that excellence in education with our new state-of-the-art simulation center. We will foster scientists who pioneer research, and we will prepare the next generation of advanced practice registered nurses for the critical role that they play in delivering primary care to the communities in which they serve, including Washington Heights and Inwood. The future of, our, of Columbia Nursing, and indeed the future of nursing, is in this building, the technology within, our vibrant faculty, staff, students, and alumni. We are confident that this building will serve as a destination and a host for national and global conferences where thought leaders and clinicians and scientists will come together and practice and learn from each other and forward the thinking of um, nursing in the future. So I feel strongly also that this new building is a significant addition to the campus of Columbia University Medical Center. It's integral to the renaissance and transformation that we already see on this campus that we are experiencing and at Columbia University as well. So we are proud to be a part of this growth and this expansion uh, at the whole university. We have a very special evening planned. Uh, following the dedication ceremony, we should be having some champagne circulating. Um, I invite you to tour the different floors of the building. We're going to have uh, guides take you throughout, uh, including ve uh, viewing some demonstrations in our simulation center led by many of our students, um, and enjoy the surroundings. And while you tour, please take in uh, uh, some of the artifacts and special theme walls we have. This is one of my favorite. I started my career as a public health nurse. Uh, and this shows for a little bit earlier than me, uh, from <laughs> 1923. Um, and we have art artifacts and, and photos and things like this all throughout the building. So as you go, take a look at the themes, which really show our 125 years of Columbia nursing. All of the themes aren't installed yet, um, but they will be soon. But, but take a look at what we have installed. It's, it's, really, it's really quite beautiful. And it tells our history from 1992 to today uh, as an enduring and innovative leader in healthcare education, practice, and research. So this is our past, uh, our present, and most importantly, our future. And I could not be more proud and excited to be with you here and embark on this new journey. So thank you for coming. And now uh, I want to welcome our President Lee Bollinger, please. So um, 
I just want to say a few things about uh, the importance of space and what it does uh, for a university. I want to say something about uh, space at Columbia generally, uh, and then I want to say something about the school. Uh, one of the things that's been a mystery to me, but a happy mystery, uh, is to see how new space uh, invigorates great scholarship and teaching. It's an extraordinary, extraordinary thing. Uh, you know, in one sense, maybe it shouldn't be surprising. Uh, Bobby mentioned, you know, moving into a house or something. We know that that's very exciting. But what it does for an academic uh, school or a community uh, is really very tangible. Uh, you can see the effects on the students. Uh, I mean, I'm looking up here. Uh, I, 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 you know, suddenly I, I, I saw them and uh, knew right away uh, that these were students and, 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 and faculty. Uh, I mean, it's really, really uh, vital to, uh, to a school. And in a sense, it's a moment where you also have to live up uh, to new standards of, of creativity in teaching and scholarship. So there's, a, there's an invigoration that happens, but there's also uh, a burden, uh, an expectation that we be better than we were uh, before we had this opportunity. And I, I think that's something we all embrace. Secondly, something about Columbia. I, I think it's fair to say we missed a generation of building uh, at Columbia, and we're making up for it now. So if you go to Morningside Heights and you see the Northwest Corner building and, and uh, you see other uh, new facilities in the, in the neighborhood, uh, if you just go a few blocks to Manhattanville, of course, we've opened the Green uh, Science Center and the Zuckerman Mind Brain Behavior Institute and the Lenfest Center for the Arts, and in a year from now, uh, we'll open the Forum Building, and then in about four years from now, we'll open the Business School Buildings, and hopefully in some period of time, uh, we will also have a global building and maybe an engineering-based uh, building. I mean, this is a, an extraordinary development. You come up here, we've opened the uh, Education Building, and this one, Lee, who has worked on this with uh, Bobby and Mary, I mean, this is a, a dream uh, that has been, uh, uh, you know, theirs to fulfill. But uh, Lee has other ideas, and, and the faculty and schools up here have other ideas to pursue. But, it, but already, you feel uh, this sense of, of freshness of, of new buildings. And then if you go up to the uh, sports facilities, the Campbell Sports Center, and uh, some other changes, if you go up to Lamont Doherty, uh, the Comer Geophysical uh, Building, I mean, these are, these are really big things for the institution, and we want to celebrate all of it. Uh, the School of Nursing uh, has taken this on, and I've been impressed from the moment I came here by the dedication of the school to its mission and to itself and to the world. It is, of course, at the center of one of the most important areas of, of society in the world, and that is health. Um, but it has taken this on with a, a sense of real creativity about its programs, the nurse practitioner, uh, program, other things. Uh, this has been uh, really uh, impressive to see. Uh, I can't uh, look around here without thinking about just how how great this will be for the students and faculty. Uh, I just think it's wonderful, and it will happen uh, over time. Uh, that this will this will really really have consequences, positive consequences for the school and for the medical center up here in the university. So I want to say congratulations to Bobby, uh, to the school, to the faculty and students who have worked on this, uh, to Lee Goldman who made sure that this was uh, going to happen, to the facilities people. Uh, to the architects, uh, everybody who has worked on this. It's, it's an enormous uh, project, and it's now basically fulfilled. You just have to move in, and then we'll see. Thank you very much. And now my pleasure to give you Lee Goldman. Well, Lee, thank you. This is a, a really very special day. I thought about a couple of numbers. I'm sort of a numbers kind of guy. 
Um, it's 125 years since the nursing school was uh, founded. Uh, it's been in several different locations. Uh, it's been seven years since Bobby came. When she came, she did what most deans do during the negotiation. She said, like, what are you offering me? I said, not much. Uh, <laughs> but we'll build a... That was the first negotiation. That was the first negotiation, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but you know, we'll figure out a way to build a building. Uh, we didn't quite know where. We didn't quite know when. We didn't quite know how. And we certainly didn't know how much. Uh, but that was the commitment. And uh, here we are. Uh, Bobby and her team uh, raised $22 million and still counting toward this uh, building. And I would thank all the people who have been generous, all the people who have made this happen. But rather than repeat all the uh, thanks that uh, Bobby uh, and Lee mentioned, I'm going to talk mostly about Bobby. Because it was school to be great, has to have terrific faculty, recruit top students, uh, but the vision of the dean really makes a difference. And uh, those of you who have been around for a while know that uh, Mary Mundinger deserves tremendous credit for pushing the idea of a building, but turning that from an idea to a practical accomplishment was not simple. Uh, and Bobby thought creatively. She thought uh, that rather than just looking at what could happen if we knocked down the Georgian building, what if we thought about a different location? Uh, that way the school wouldn't have to be relocated for four or five years and uh, who knows where. <laughs> we settled on this site. Uh, the original uh, plan was that uh, the building would take up half well, it's actually take up half of the lot and be half the height of the Berry Building next door. Our architects said, au contraire, <laughs> we have a better idea. And just like that, Bobby said, this is a much better idea. We're going to use a quarter of the lot rather than half the lot and build a building higher. That way we'll have a rooftop, a view that will never be compromised by whatever else might go on this site. And with that fundamental change in sort of the, the concept of the building, uh, it, it became a reality. And I want to really thank everyone who thought about the design and the people who brought us here today. Uh, as Lee said, uh, buildings are surprisingly transformative. Uh, Columbia, certainly Columbia on this campus, was a place where for decades people would have visitors come and say, this is a great place even if the buildings are dumpy. You know, the people are terrific, the buildings, ugh. And we're determined to change that, not just because we want the buildings to be better, but because with better buildings you get even better people. And this building is not only roughly twice the size of the previous home of the nursing school, it's, wow. <laughs> it really is transformative. Uh, with this building, you see a spectacular simulation space, uh, incredible social and gathering space, uh, more than twice as much space uh, for uh, research in an already research intensive nursing school. Uh, this is the future. This is the, the vehicle, if you will, to take an already terrific nursing school and make it somehow even better. So I want to congratulate everyone who's part of this, but especially thank my colleague Bobby Berkowitz who came here with this vague hope and promise we'd somehow do this. And uh, seven years later, uh, we're here. And uh, Bobby, you did it. Congratulations. <laughs> and our cascade of speakers, it's uh, my pleasure to introduce the chair of the board of trustees of Columbia University, a good friend of all of us. Um, Terrific supporter of the nursing school and the medical center, Jonathan Schiller. Good evening. This is a, a special night, and I have the opportunity and the privilege on behalf of the Columbia Board of Trustees to congratulate Dean Berkowitz, to congratulate the faculty, the students, and the staff of the School of Nursing on their dedication and our participation in the dedication of this remarkable facility. This is so important for the reasons Lee outlined. 
and the purposes of this school. This is so important to the board that we're marking this achievement by holding our June board meeting here this weekend. We will all be here Friday and Saturday. We appreciate the teaching and the research that is occurring here that will elevate health care throughout this city, throughout the United States, and throughout the world. And we appreciate the dedicated individuals who train here as nurses, who go on to become leaders of the profession, just as previous generations of this school's alumni have done occupying critical posts in academia, in government, in professional organizations, and of course at leading hospitals like our own New York Presbyterian. For so many reasons, the School of Nursing deserves this new beautiful home. But no more extraordinary than the contributions to nursing, to health care, and to society made by this school's graduates every day here in New York, throughout the United States, and throughout the world. It is difficult not to be impressed on an occasion like this by the large number of individuals who must join together to create a world-class academic facility like this one. There are academic leaders of the university and our medical center, an energetic and optimistic dean, other friends of the school, and visionary architects like this architect, Gary, who you will, hear, you will hear from in another minute. Many of you are here tonight having been brought together in this project by a high purpose and a strong belief in the future. And to all of you, I say thank you and good luck. Yeah. Bobby. So now that infamous architect we've been talking about. <laughs> um, before I ask uh, Guy to come to the podium, I just want to say a few words. So Guy Geyer is the partner uh, in charge of CoFX Fowl, uh, and he and his firm uh, have built this fabulous building for us. Um, so just a personal word about Guy and his team. Uh, as, as Lee has said, when we were talking with a variety of firms, we had this idea in our head um, and it was a, we thought it was a big idea. It turned out Guy thought it was a pretty small idea. Um, but, we, you know, we, we were listening to the different firms telling us how we could um, create this small idea we had. But when Guy and his team met with us um, and they showed us what they had in mind, anything we had previously thought just diminished in light of their vision. Um, they, had a, they had an incredible deep understanding of what was possible and what was possible in a school of nursing and what a building for a school of nursing ought to be like. Um, and they showed us how that vision, that beauty, and that function could help define our future. And uh, so, thank you, Guy. Come on up. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. Um, President Bollinger, Dr. Goldman, uh, trustees, faculty, staff, students, <laughs> alumni and friends, good evening. It's great to be here. Um, who would have known, what was it, seven years ago when we came in and sort of broke the rules, right? We had this competition brief that we had, and we said, hmm, well, let's give it a roll and see what happens, that it worked and um, we're th so thrilled with how well it worked. It's really an honor and a pleasure uh, to thank the nursing school community, everyone that we work with, faculty, students, administrators. It was really a team effort, as well as Zamador Santano, Patrick Burke, Ben Suzuki, and Tony Donatich, uh, who really entrusted the CoFX FAL team with this prestigious project. Um, we couldn't be more proud, frankly, of uh, the building and that it will energize and inspire its students, we think, we hope. We can see it already in your eyes. Matter of fact, um, when I was walking around earlier with Riva, um, she told me a story which I'd just like to repeat, which is, you know, we, we, as architects, we love to design buildings, we love to design spaces, 
and see that, you know, the built effect of our, our creative thinking. But I have to really be honest, the best thing about it is a story that Reva told me, which was that um, they were taking a group of students through the building last week, and one of the students started to cry and said, I just can't believe you guys built this building for us. Well, to me, that is the icing on the cake. Everything else is great, but that made my day. So, you know, when we go back and we think about designing this school, we had a lot of critical goals in mind. We reflected on the best qualities of our client, who was very clear in creating a premier building and a state-of-the-art learning environment uh, to advance a world-class curriculum. We wanted to craft an architectural design that engages and anchors the larger Columbia campus and the 168th Street community. We, we wanted to create an architecture that encouraged interaction and collaboration of all the students and the faculty. That was our vision and our hope, and I hope that I believe that we've accomplished that in the new building. So on behalf of the entire COFX FAL team, uh, including Nick Garrison, who was the design leader of the team, uh, and Michael Syracuse and our colleagues at Co-Architects, John Kanda and Scott Kelsey, as well as my team uh, of Louis Bustamante and Michael Syracuse and Christina Galati and Dawn Hood, we want to just tell you how proud we are to be here with you tonight, and congratulations on this significant milestone in your 125-year history. So we did build it for you guys. <laughs> we did. And I want to introduce you now to one of our students, Daniel Billings. Let me just tell you a little bit about Daniel before he comes up. Hang on to that champagne. It's just a few more minutes. So um, this building was created to enhance the experience of students in, in multiple ways. And we're going to be discovering in the next days and weeks and months and years exactly how that, that plays out. Um, but they are the reason that we strive for excellence, and I'd like to introduce you to an exemplar of nursing's future. So Daniel Billings came to us from a career as an opera singer mm -hmm. and has served in numerous volunteer leadership roles for the past three years, including as an admissions ambassador. You're going to wonder how he has time to study a Robert Wood Johnson Foundation New Careers in Nursing mentor, a Jonas Nurse Leader Scholar, and now as a board member of Columbia Nursing's Alumni Association and co-president of the Doctoral Student Nurses Organization. He was an inaugural recipient of the 2016 Campbell Award presented by Columbia Alumni Association. Daniel has just, become work just began working as a hematology nurse practitioner at the Herbert Irving Comprehensive Cancer Center. Daniel. Thank you, Dean Berkowitz. It is an honor to address you all tonight on this special occasion as a proud and excited Columbia nursing student. Before becoming a nurse, I was an opera singer for many years. I chose to become a nurse because I had a friend who died of cancer. During the final months of his life, he spent it mainly in the hospital. And I saw firsthand how nurses cared for him and his parents and how they supported my friend and his family. This experience led me to become a Columbia nurse, which was what enabled me to pursue a career as a nurse practitioner while working towards achieving the profession's highest clinical degree, the Doctor of Nursing Practice. I'm very proud to be standing in this building to see how the school has evolved and what this means to us as students. I look forward to the many ways that my fellow students and I will be able to use and enjoy this amazing new building. I now serve on the executive board of the newly formed Oncology Nursing Student Club. I think some of the board members are here. <laughs> and we are already thinking of the 
the many, many exciting events that we can organize here. <laughs> I'm most excited about all of the different spaces this new building will offer us to interact with each other and with faculty, whether it be to collaborate on research or to share a cup of coffee from the cafe and sit among the beautiful plantings on the amazing rooftop terrace while we catch a view of the George Washington Bridge. Something we are all especially proud of is the Building Simulation Learning Laboratory, the Helene Fold Health Trust Simulation Center, which is located on the, the two floors directly above us, which will offer us an exceptional environment in which to strengthen our clinical practice skills. And I'd like to add that while I am excited about all this new building offers, I am not surprised Columbia Nursing has chosen this environment for its new home. For me, Columbia Nursing has always been ahead of the trend in nursing education. I knew this is where I would learn everything I need to learn to aspire to be the best nurse I am capable of being. I am honored to be a Columbia Nursing student and honored to be here tonight to pay tribute to this wonderful milestone. Now, it is my privilege to introduce Marjorie Harrison Fleming, a member of the class of 1969 who has served as a volunteer leader for decades. Affectionately known as Midge to all who know her, she currently serves as a chair of the school's board of visitors and is an active leader with her class, and she was also a Columbia, Columbia alumni medals, medalist, excuse me, Columbia alumni medalist in 2007. Please welcome Midge. Thank you, Daniel. It's an enormous pleasure to stand before all of you today. This particular moment, the dedication of Columbia School, University School of Nursing's new home, has been an occasion that my fellow alumni and classmates have anticipated for a very long time, a very long time, since 1969, to be exact. <laughs> and as Sue Hawes aptly, sa aptly says, this is Anna's home. And it is. And I actually would also like to say that I think this light has got to make um, Florence Nightingale be very proud. This is so much like her lamp. As many of you know, the last time Columbia Nursing had its own purpose-built home was from 1928 to 1984, when the school was based in a, in a building named for Anna C. Maxwell on Fort Washington Avenue. And she was our founder and our first dean. Anna Maxwell emphasized the relationship between one's physical environment and the workplace, and how critical it was for nurses to have a place to work and to study. And I think that's what's happening here. She also knew the importance of rigorous scientific education and discipline in study. She never ceased to promote her mission and that of the school. And as we look at this beautiful building this evening with its carefully planned areas for collaboration and study, for socializing and connection to the community, it's a far cry from the Georgian, and it's a state-of-the-art stimulation center, I feel that we are truly carrying on Anna C. Maxwell's legacy and vision. And I would also like to, to uh, remember at this time all those who began this journey those alumni, faculty, deans, friends, where vision and leadership have led us to celebrate this very, very special day. Thank you, too, for being guardians of our legacy and custodians of our history. Each of you has had an integral part in this journey, and I personally thank you. This is about everyone and all of us, the past, the present, and for sure the future. Personally, this is a moment filled with pride and a lot of emotion. As I reflect the exceptional education I received at Columbia Nursing, not only its impact on my career, but also every facet of my life. And I am truly in awe and extraordinarily grateful. I'm thrilled to stand here today in this modern, beautiful, light-filled building, thoughtfully designed to serve the needs of the students, the faculty, the staff, and the alumni. And friends, we are a family with a mission, and we are on a move. It is very moving to know that going forward, Columbia nursing students like Daniel 
will benefit from a purpose-built space, just as I once could do as a young nursing student in 1967 when I first arrived at Maxwell Hall. I'm excited to return here in the future for reunions, lectures, meetings, and events. And I'm immensely pleased and proud that all of us here tonight can eventually wind our way to the seventh floor, the event space, and our rooftop garden, where we once again can enjoy sweeping views of Upper Manhattan that include the always inspiring George Washington Bridge. And I want to thank the architects and the A-team for the bridge. <laughs> that was very important to us in times of stress and in good times, the bridge. And the lights were on, too. Um, it is now a great honor and a pleasure to invite Dean Berkowitz to lead us in raising a glass for a cel celebratory toast. Trustee Sh Chair Schiller, President Bollinger, and Dean Goldman, please come stand before us all once more this evening. Take scissors in hand and cut the ribbon, please, for our beautiful new home. Don't cut Thank it yet. You. Thank you. First, we're going to have a toast, <laughs> except you and I need some champagne. <laughs> All right, everybody got something to drink? Yeah. So a toast to our new home, and to the future of nursing, and to our friends and family. Yeah. All right, now, let's see if we can get this last part. So I'd like uh, our trustee chair Schiller, President Bollinger, Dean Goldman, and Ken Ford, um, Scissors, all right. <laughs> <laughs>